Hello everyone, and welcome to a Skyrim build video. That's right, as well as streaming six days a week, I'm also giving you a video. Why? So that I can let you all know that I'm streaming six days a week. Monday to Saturday, 8pm till midnight UK time, I am live streaming a 100% playthrough of Skyrim. That means just two hours after this video goes live, I'll be entering the icy cold lands of Skyrim and beginning my journey. So, if that interests you, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. For those of you thinking, uh, why do YouTubers always do stupid intros like these? Just get on with the video! You're right, I should get on with this build. So, let's get started with the skill section. The main skills for this build are Destruction and Light Armor. In the Destruction skill tree, we start out by lowering casting costs. I personally took the Novice, Apprentice and Adept Destruction perks, as those were the ones which cover the spells I was using. No point in spending extra perk points if you're not going to use the highest level spells. The destruction spells I had used with this character were all fire based, so I of course made sure to grab augmented flames to boost damage output, and intense flames in order to cause low health enemies to flee when set ablaze. Our other main skill is light armor. In this tree our main priority is increasing our defensive stats, so make sure to grab as many ranks of the agile defender perk along with custom fit and matching set. Additionally, the left hand side of the tree has some lovely perks, starting with Unhindered which removes the weight of your armour and the mild speed debuff you get from wearing it. Once you've got that you can pick up Windwalker for 50% faster stamina regen, and finally there's the Deft Movement perk, giving you a 10% chance to avoid melee damage. Honestly, all the light armour perks are great, so you really can't go wrong with this tree. Onto our minor skills now, where we have One-Handed, Conjuration, and Archery. One-Handed is really our backup way of dealing damage. Ideally you want to defeat your enemies with destruction spells, so this skill shouldn't be much of a priority. Just get the odd rank of Armsman so that your sword blows can finish off whatever survives the flames. And Archery is exactly the same. This character isn't really an Archery based build, there's already plenty of those. Having the bow just gives you an alternate ranged weapon and adds more flavour to the character, so don't invest too heavily here, just focus on upping the damage a touch. Finally there's Conjuration, where once again you're just going to be focusing on reducing the casting costs for the creatures you will summon. This takes even less investment than Destruction did, as the two summons I laid out for this build are both under Apprentice Conjuration, so you'll only ever need to spend two points in this tree to get by. With skills out of the way, let's talk about powers and levelling. For the first 10 levels, I'd recommend investing purely into Magicka, in order to get a healthy starting pool. After that, split evenly between all three choices until you're happy with the amount of stamina and Magicka you have. As for health, more's always better. In terms of powers, I figured nothing would be more fitting than the Fire Breath Shout. A character based on the heat of a desert sun needs to convey that, and someone shooting forth unbearable heat from her face seemed to work. And as for a starting stone, I went with the Lord Stone. Yeah, it's a little bit of a boring one, but it works well at helping you stay alive. Nothing wrong with that in my books. The weapons for this build are made up of two uniques, Dawnbreaker and Oriole's Bow. These are great at eliminating undead, and despite not being a primary focus of the character, fit in perfectly with the theme I was going for. Both deal bonus damage to the Walking Dead and have badass looks to them. The only real downside is in obtaining them, but at least you'll have something to do when playing the character. Although once you do get Oriole's Bow, there's the additional challenge of getting Sun Hallowed Arrows, if you want to truly use the power of the sun. As for the armour, it's a whole lot easier. Join the Dawn Guard, help them out, and get yourself a set of Dawn Guard Light Armour. Make sure not to accidentally wear any of the heavy armour pieces, and if you want to get the same look as my character, make sure to grab the Red Torso. This set is decent enough on its own, but comes with the added bonus of reducing damage from vampires by 25% when wearing all pieces, just the bonus you need when helping this faction out. Which is exactly what you'll be doing. The Dawnguard are the only faction you really need to be joining with this build, however you should also help out anyone who sounds like they're dealing with some kind of undead problem. As for followers, ideally you'll take any Dawnguard member along with you. These are individuals already trained in fighting the Dark Forces, so should prove fitting companions if you see fit to take them along, but there is always the option to venture out on your own if you prefer, as I did when testing this build out. One of the main reasons you may want to travel solo is to not inadvertently kill your follower, as the main spell I used with this character was Fireball, 
a deadly explosive flame-based destruction spell that can be lethal, even when your aim's a little off. If you want to support this spell with some additional magic, then you can always summon up a Flame Atronarch or Flaming Familiar. The Flame Atronarch is a reliable summon that I'm sure we're all used to seeing by now, but, somewhat ironically, the Flaming Familiar is anything but. You get it? Because it's a familiar, which is not familiar to us. <laughs> I'll be here all week, folks. Except I won't! Didn't you listen to the intro? I don't stream on Sundays. The schedule's Monday to Saturday, 8pm till midnight UK time. I don't know what time that is for you, because I don't know where you live, but there'll be a few other time zones on screen, and I'm sure you're all smart enough to figure this out for yourself. Point is, not about on Sundays. Not here all week. Back to the familiar. If you want this unique summon, then you'll need to do the quest, a scroll for Ansgar at Highgate Ruins. And make sure you keep the quest giver alive. That's all I'll say for now, as it's a quest that I'm sure plenty of gamers have dodged by during their time with Skyrim, and I really don't want to spoil the few surprises Skyrim may have left for any of us. Magic is not the only focus of this build, so when in combat and watching your magicka drain low, don't forget about your sword and your bow. To fulfil the oath you sworn, you must will the Breaker of Dawn. A sword that contains the power of Meridia's Flame, a true unique within this game. Yet if sword turns to plowshare ready to harrow, reach for your bow and knock an arrow. From draw to loose, watch it take flight, and kill your foes with blinding light. Now if you enjoyed these rhymes I transcribed, don't forget to like and subscribe. Fear not, for this section has ended, all my couplets have been expended. To learn from where this character came, only one section now remains. Little is known of this mysterious figure from the sands of Hammerfell. Upon arriving in Skyrim, he seems resigned to his fate, not attempting to break free from the chopping block until Alduin swoops down and unleashes chaos. Once freed, however, it can be possible to piece together an idea of why he may have been so accepting of death. This Red God has a particular penchant for slaying the undead, a talent that is seen favourably in the lands of Skyrim, but which is one of the greatest taboos under the Alakir Desert. The skill at which he dispatches the undead clearly shows that he has fought them before, and this would be more than enough to exile him from Redguard society. Whether this exile was self-imposed or for official decree though, we will never know. Despite being banished from the desert of his home, he has carried its son with him to the chill land of Skyrim, bringing with him that to which the undead are weak, and possibly saving all of Nern from a great foe. As long as he doesn't run into an ice mage. He's really not prepared for them. And there we have it, yet another Skyrim build on the channel. If you want to see more, then you're in luck! There's a playlist of them, with over 60 different builds you can take a look at. It's honestly a bit ridiculous at this point. But if that's somehow still not enough Skyrim for you, then fret not, as I will be playing it during my livestreams as I attempt to do a playthrough of the game where I do as much as it is possible for me to do, and finally get all those achievements on Steam so I can truly call myself the King of Skyrim. Although I probably won't call myself that. I much prefer going by Sarge, a lot less formal. Anywho, that was the video. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, you all know this stuff I'm sure. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.